Warning, this show may contain biased opinions regarding the Southeastern Conference, and in particular, the University of Florida. College football fans that don't meet these criteria are cautioned, for this program may show outrageous and extreme takes. A lot of what fans love about college football never really has anything to do with college football itself. Sometimes, the things surrounding a college football game can give a person a much-needed escape from reality. The friendships, the tailgating, the smells, the stadiums. These can be some of the more positive and happier moments in someone's life. For one day, you can put things like your job, financial problems, and other pointless responsibilities behind you and just be present in the moment. Without certain people behind the scenes though, none of this could ever happen. Without these types of people, game day would just be another day. There would be no excitement, no passion, no love. For Gator Nation, there was one man in particular that could get fans ready for game day like no one else. George Edmondson Jr., better known as Mr. Two Bits, was the Gators' leading hype man, going as far back as 1949. This is a man whose entire life was dedicated to bringing joy and positivity to college football. I will be diving into his history today in the day that changed Florida Gator football forever. George Edmondson was born in Atlanta, Georgia on July 17, 1922. His family moved to Tampa, Florida after he was born, and he ended up living in Tampa for most of his life. Before and after World War II, George absolutely crushed it as an amateur golfer, with his name constantly popping up in local newspapers from his performances. The best one I saw was when he played in a tournament in 1930 where Babe freaking Ruth was playing in. Yes, the Great Bambino. His father also seemed to be a very popular person back in the 30s. He was an insurance agent and part of the Orange Bowl committee. He was also an influential member of the United States Golf Association. One thing his father seemed to be famous for was for being one of the most famous college football fans in the state. The Miami Herald called him the All-American Football Fan. They even claimed that he may have seen upwards of 75 games in one season. And this was even in the 30s, when transportation wasn't as efficient as it is today. A great quote he had when asked about how much money he spends on football games was, A rich friend once asked me how I could afford my unusual hobby. I asked him how many automobiles he had, and he replied that he had three. He had a staff of servants, too. Well, I didn't have but one automobile and no servant, so my hobby wasn't any more expensive for me than those two things were for him. Well, getting back to his son, George Jr., he would later attend the Citadel and would leave after two years to enlist in the Navy following the events at Pearl Harbor. In the Navy, Edmondson was a fighter pilot, where he flew a Grumman F-6F Hellcat. He supposedly even survived a crash landing one time in 1944 in the Atlantic Ocean in the middle of the night. After coming home from the war, Edmondson worked as an insurance salesman in the Tampa area. He was invited by a friend of his to go to a college football game at the University of Florida. They were playing his former school, the Citadel, and the date was September 24, 1949. At the time, Florida was not a very good football team, hardly ever having over a 500 winning percentage. The fans never really expected much from this program, and as the team was running out onto the field, the crowd was booing at their own players and coaches. Edmondson was shocked, not understanding that fans of a team can be some of the worst people on the planet. He couldn't believe that fans could boo people on the same team that they were rooting for, especially since these people booing were probably grown men and much older than the athletes themselves. Thank God they didn't have Twitter back then, or he would have lost his mind. In order to boost the team's morale, he decided he was going to lead a chant with the crowd. He ended up using an old chant that he used to use in high school and just added the Gators name to it. It went like this, two bits, four bits, six bits, a dollar, all for the Gators, stand up and holler. And then he would try to get the crowd to cheer after that. The Gators ended up winning their game versus the Citadel, and nearby fans enjoyed his enthusiasm, asking him to come back the next week to lead the chant again. After that season, he ended up becoming a season ticket holder and a big fan. He started going around to different spots of the stadium, leading the two-bitch cheer again and again. He would do this for every home game and even some away and bowl games. He ended up being called Mr. Two-Bits, and by the 70s, he was asked by the university to lead the two-bitch cheer before games on the field. During the games, he would still roam around the stadium, leading the cheer at different points of the game. 
Timing was very important to Mr. Two Bits. He never wanted to steal the show from the actual team. He was careful to make sure his cheers never interrupted the game. He once said, Can you imagine what would happen if I blew that whistle at the wrong time during the play and some of those fellows thought it was the referee's whistle? Mr. Two Bits would go on to perform the chant until the end of the 2008 season, briefly retiring in 1998, only to come back to do the chant again for a few more seasons. He became so popular that at one point, the Tampa Bay Bucks organization approached him to do the same cheer for their team. They were going to actually pay him to be Mr. Two Bits, but he declined saying, what I do for the Gators is from the heart, not from the pocketbook. He was never paid for his role as Mr. Two Bits and always insisted on buying his season tickets like the average fan. His one request was that he always wanted an aisle seat so that he could easily get in and out of his seat to do his chant. He wore the same attire almost every game, with a long sleeve dress shirt, an orange and blue tie, white and blue striped seersucker pants, and black and white saddle shoes. He also would always have with him his whistle and orange and blue two-bit sign. From everything I've read and watched about Mr. Two-Bits, he just seemed like a very humble and positive guy. He made sure to never boo the team. Even when the Gators were getting blown out, he would still remain positive and do his cheers. Everybody would boo. Good gracious alive. What's everybody booing about? Well, they were down on the team. They were there, but down on the team. I said, shoot, I've never booed in my life, and I'm not going to start now. They're just kids out there playing. Let's cheer for them. I said, what do you mean, cheer for them? I said, yeah, let's give them a left cheer. Every time they do something wrong, we'll stand up and do a cheer. I said, what cheer? I said, well, everybody knows two bits, four bits from high school. Let's do that. He even helped start a scholarship in the 80s for the cheerleading team to help pay for a couple of the members' schooling each season. His final game was at the end of the 2008 season against his former school, the Citadel. The Gators had one of the best college football teams ever at the time, doing a complete transformation from when he had first done the cheer in 1949. Ever since then, the University of Florida has had an honorary member lead the two-pitch cheer before every home game. They choose different members who have had positive impacts on the school. Though he never attended the University of Florida as a student, the school made him an honorary alumnus, and he claims Florida as his alma mater. He's also in the UF Athletic Hall of Fame as an honorary letter winner. One thing I read during my research which I found hilarious is when his family all ended up attending college. His wife and son both went to FSU and his daughter graduated from Georgia. Come on now. George Edmondson Jr. passed away on July 2nd, 2019 at the age of 96. He created a legacy that is still remembered today and will continue to be remembered for a very long time. Ex-Gator coach Steve Spurrier once said about Edmondson, he's just a wonderful guy that wanted to get the fans into the ball game, cheering and yelling and screaming for the Gators. He's a legend. Ex-player Chris Doring even said, I think it's really important that people understand that there's this thread that kind of connects all the generations of Gator fans. The Mr. Two-Bit cheer is definitely one of those that I'm glad they found a way to continue. You know, I think Gator fans need to start honoring Mr. Two-Bit's legacy by treating the team as he would. Mike Bianchi, for the Orlando Sentinel, wrote an article about an interview he had with Mr. Two Bits. In it, he wrote about how he didn't like where fandom was headed these days. He hated that stadiums were being taken over by drunken, profane fans, and would shake his head sadly when told of the negative comments made on fan message boards today. Edmondson told Bianchi, I don't like all the negative stuff out there. It used to be, if you were unhappy with your team, you talk about it among friends. Now people are punching buttons on a computer and sending it all over the world. I've always thought teams face enough negativism from opposing fans. They don't need it from their own fans too. Maybe I'm old fashioned, but I believe you support your team, your players, your coach, no matter what. Uh -huh. Mr. Tool.